investors. It's also a great business deal. Developers can give their apps away for free, or if they choose, they can sell them. If they sell them, the developer picks the price. 70% of the revenue from that price goes straight to the developer. There are no credit card fees. In fact, there are no hosting fees or other infrastructure fees. Apple covers all of that. And developers are paid monthly. So it is a great business deal. But we've been listening. And some developers have come to us saying there are other business models they'd love to support for their applications. For instance, subscriptions. Right? There are publishers out there of things like magazines that would love to have a magazine application right on the store where you can renew that subscription inside the application. There are game developers who would love to add additional levels and be able to sell game levels right from within the game. And there's a lot of other new content that developers like to sell inside an application. For instance, an ebook. Today, you have to sell one application per book. But there are ebook developers who would love to sell a generic ebook application and have a bookstore built into the app. Well, I'm happy to say that we are supporting all of these additional purchase models in iPhone 3.0. And we're doing it with what we call in app purchase. Let me show you how it works. Let's say you have an e magazine. In iPhone 3.0, Right from within this application, you'll be able to purchase the renewal. So you get this standard panel, it comes up and says, in this case, would you like to purchase six more months for $4.99? When you tap buy, you'll continue to receive all of the issues to this magazine right inside the app. Next, a game. You can now purchase a game that would come with, say, 10 levels. And when you're done playing those 10 levels, just by the tap of your finger, you could purchase the next 10 levels for the game. When you say you'd like to buy it, the game will automatically download those levels right into the game. One more example, city guides. Again, before iPhone 3.0, you would need to sell one application per guide. But with iPhone 3.0, you can sell a generic city guide application, and then sell city packs. So you can see here, I've already purchased, say, the Boston and the New York City pack. But let's say I want to purchase Chicago. That's as easy as tapping on Chicago. And it brings up the standard alert asking me if I'd like to purchase it. Now here's where it's really nice. This whole thing is tied directly into the iTunes store. So when you tap on Buy, it brings up a standard iTunes credential panel. In a secure way, you now get your username, you type in your password, and when you do, it talks back to our iTunes store, validates the account, and when it approves the purchase, the application is free to download that city guide right into the app. And now, you're good to go. So, in-app purchase. The business model for in-app purchase is the same as for the app store, meaning the developer sets the price for in-app purchase items. Again, 70% of the revenue goes straight to the developer. There are no credit card fees. We will cover all the credit card fees. And developers are paid monthly. Now, to keep the model simple for the consumer, this is for paid apps only. So if a developer sells an application, and it makes sense in that application to have an in-app purchase, say for a subscription, you're absolutely happy to go ahead and do that. But to keep it simple, when a consumer sees a free application, free apps remain free. You won't be asked ever to buy something inside that free application. And that's what we're doing for in-app purchase. Next, support for peer-to-peer -peer connectivity. And this is especially great for peer-to-peer -peer games. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have a few kids in the back seat of the car, and they each have their own iPhone or iPod Touch, and they'd like to play backgammon against each other. With the APIs now built in to iPhone 3.0, when you touch, say, a multiplayer button, it'll bring up a standard system panel, which finds 
all the other iPhones and iPod Touches in that area that are currently playing that game. You can choose who you'd like to play against. It automatically sends a request to them. When they accept it, it forms an IP connection, and the game is off and running peer-to-peer. -peer. So peer-to-peer -peer connectivity. What we provide here is automatic discovery. We'll automatically discover other applications that are running around you in your proximity. We do it all wirelessly over Bluetooth. So you don't need to join a Wi-Fi network. There doesn't need to be a Wi-Fi network. It's all done wirelessly. In addition, there's no pairing. This is all completely seamless, both for the developer and for the end user. It's seamless. We use Bonjour as the technology to discover what applications are running and who wants to play. And this isn't just for games. Now, we think this is great for games, and it'll unlock a lot of peer-to-peer -peer games. But this works for any peer-to-peer -peer application. So let's say you're a salesperson, and you're at a, a sales meeting for your company. And you'd love to give someone a sales lead, send them a contact. Well, your company could build an application easily using this API that will automatically find your colleague's phone, make that connection, allow you to share that contact, walk away, you're done. So peer-to-peer -peer connectivity, we think it's going to be great in the iPhone 3 SDK. Next, accessories. We have this thriving ecosystem for accessories. There are thousands of developers building thousands and thousands of accessories that work great with iPods and with iPhones. Right? Here's one of the more popular ones, a speaker. And with a speaker, you can plug your iPhone right into it and now listen to your music right over that speaker. Well, with the iPhone 3.0 SDK, we're going to take this support to the next level. We're going to enable accessory developers to build custom applications that talk right to the accessory. So in this example, the speaker manufacturer could build an application, an equalizer application, that is actually controlling directly the hardware equalizer of the speaker. So here's another example, an FM transmitter. FM transmitters are great if you uh, have, say, a car that doesn't have a built-in iPod connector. And what they do is they allow you to stream your music from your iPhone over uh, FM right to your car stereo. Well, with iPhone 3.0, the developer can build a custom application that pairs up with this accessory, with that FM transmitter, and automatically finds the optimal FM station over which to broadcast, tunes it in automatically, and now you're listening to your music. Now, here's another class of applications we think are going to be really interesting. And that are met, those are medical devices. You could have, say, a blood pressure cuff and write a custom application now which takes your blood pressure. You could take it. It could record it over time. It can chart it. And if there's an issue or a, you know, a downward trend that you're worried about, it could optionally have a button to send your blood pressure history to your doctor, to your healthcare professional. So what we're doing is we're enabling developers now to take more advantage of accessories, writing custom applications that can talk directly to these accessories. They talk to the accessories over the dock connector, and now also wirelessly over Bluetooth. We support all the standard built-in protocols. So these are things like playing music and pausing music, getting album artwork. In addition, you can build your own custom protocols if you want. So you have all the power you need to build an accessory, build a custom application to take the best advantage of that, and talk to that accessory in whatever way you need to to make it great. And that's what we're doing for accessories. Next, maps. Now, we've worked with Google to build an incredible maps application into the iPhone. And we've had developers who've come to us and said, you know, I'd love to embed a map into my application. 
And some developers have gone out and licensed tiles themselves and already done this. But they keep coming back to us, asking us to build something that feels natural, a Cocoa Touch control that can wrap our maps control and put it into their application. And that's exactly what we're doing with iPhone 3.0. We're taking the heart of the Maps application and making it a public API so developers can now embed that map right in their app. Here's an example. Let's say you have a concierge application. Right up there now is the